In this video, I'm going to show you a walkthrough uh, of installing Dodge UX so that you can have Boink running on a computer without a hard drive. You start by downloading the Dodge ISO file, which I've shown in a previous video. Once you've done that, you double click on it and either use the built in Windows software or other software and uh, it copies the ISO file, which is a, an image of a CD ROM onto a CD. After burning the CD ROM, which takes about five minutes, you pop it into the computer, which does not have a hard drive. Ensure the BIOS is set to boot from CD ROM and uh, the disk should boot up to a uh, Dodge, as you can see in the video. This may take up to 20 minutes. Once it's booted, you choose create a USB, as in a video, and the password always, always boink, and the username is always boink. Once you've chosen step one, you choose the amount of disk space on the USB drive you'd like to reserve. Uh, for this 2 gigabyte USB example, I'm going to choose about 600 megabytes. It then starts creating the USB boot image onto the USB thumb drive that you've uh, put into the computer. And this can also take 10 or 20 minutes. If the mouse or the USB drive is not working, it may be a very old computer and you may need to just switch it off at the wall and restart it. Once you've uh, created the USB drive, you can now uh, shut down the, the Unix system. So in the video you can see you click on shut down and shut down. And then wait one or two minutes while the system shuts down. It then asks you to remove the CD. You remove the CD from the drive and switch off the computer. If necessary, set the BIOS to boot from a USB drive and make sure that you have switched off the computer completely, especially if it's an old one. Then press enter twice or just wait 30 seconds and then you log in as usual with username boink, password boink. The system then boots up again and we're now ready to do step two of the process. So we choose the applications, boink USB and choose step two. A window then opens and you type in Y and then enter to continue with the installation. If it asks you for the password again, the password is boink. Now this step could take a few minutes. As you can see, I've speeded up the video by cutting out certain parts of it, so you won't have to wait the full two minutes. It then asks you if you want to proceed and you press Y and then follow that by the enter key and the installation continues. It then asks you again if you would like to use the text console, choose no if you would prefer to use the graphics. And then if you have a, a normal network, most people have something called DHCP, you just press no so you don't have to configure the network manually. The USB drive is now fully set up for um, booting to Boink. So again, you can shut down and switch off the computer. If it's a slightly newer computer, you can just uh, restart. Having rebooted, you can now log in and make a few changes to make things simple. You can go into the login window setting and there under the one tab, as you can see under security, you can uh, allow the system to automatically log in and that allows it to start the Boink system without you having to be there present to type in the password. So the system will simply boot and Boink will start running. The other thing you can do is by right clicking on the top, you can add the uh, icon which allows you to 
shut down the computer without having to go through the menus. As you can see there, you can now have a shutdown button easy. The use there uh, on the menu, you can see the boink icon, and by starting boink, you can select a project to join. In this case, I've joined the World Community Grid. Another setting that's very useful is the ability to remote desktop. So if once you've set up the computer, you want to put it into, say, a cupboard without a screen, you can remote desktop into it using a program called Tart BNC. You go into the remote desktop settings, and make sure that you allow uh, people to use the remote desktop, make sure you don't ask for permission to have that working each time, and you set a very simple password that you can remember. Once you've started Boink, you may find that it doesn't have any uh, tasks downloaded correctly, and the reason would be because your settings are not correct. So go to the advanced view and choose your preferences and look at the various different tabs and configure the different options as you require them. You would typically want to set it so that the computer is always in use for Boink. And then there's a number of other settings that you may wish to use, and I'm going to show those to you shortly. Once you've done these configurations, you can then, using, say, a Windows computer, a remote desktop using Type VNC, and then take control of the screen. You can now see some possible settings that will be of value for your Boink Manager. You may wish to set the work buffer to seven days. For example, if you have a computer that you're going to put into a cupboard and it's not connected to a network, then you can just take it out of the cupboard once a week and connect it to the internet and collect new tasks. You need to ensure the disk settings are carefully managed because the USB drive is small, so it doesn't have too much space. And if the settings are too high, too much disk space will be reserved for the operating system and no tasks will download or only one task will download. Then you update your settings again and click on your project, choose update so that once your settings are entered, it registers them and collects new tasks. Thanks for watching this little video. There are additional videos on similar topics on my channel, Boink is Hot.